Hello everyone, I am Uzay Seyman. Today I am going to introduce you about carbon nanostructures. So before we start, let me overview the topics of this presentation. What is nano? Why are we studying in nanoscale? History of nanotechnology? Carbon nanomaterials? And some examples of the carbon nanomaterials. Let's start with nano. What is nano? The advent of nanoscience and nanotechnology has generated considerable advances in many industries such as composite materials, electronics, and medicine. The prefix nano means small and derives from the Greek word for dwarf named nanos. In scientific context, nano means one billionth and a nanometer means one billionth of a meter. The term nanoscience refers to the study of the structures and properties of materials on a nanometer scale, and the term nanotechnology refers to the synthesize, control, engineering, and manipulation of the nanomaterials. By nanometer scale, we mean a length scale at the level of several atoms and molecules. But why are we studying in nanoscale? When particle sizes of solid matter in the visible scale are compared to what can be seen in a regular optical microscope, there is a little difference in properties of particles. But while particles are created with the dimensions of about 1 to 100 nanometers, the material's properties change significantly from those at larger scales. This is the size scale where so-called quantum effects rule the behavior and properties of particles. Properties of materials are size dependent in this scale range. Thus, when particle size is made to be nanoscale, properties such as melting point, fluorescence, electrical conductivity, magnetic permeability, and chemical reactivity change as a function of the size of the particle. Nanoscale materials have far larger surface areas and similar mass of larger scale materials. As surface area per mass of a material increases, a greater amount of the material can come into contact with surrounding materials, thus affecting reactivity. So, what is the history of this nanotechnology? The first mention of purportedly created and applied technological processes and means which were subsequently termed nanotechnology is usually connected with the well-known lecture of Mr. Richard Payman delivered in 1959 at the session of the American Physical Society. In this lecture called, there's a lot of space down there, for the first time the possibility to create nanosized products with the use of atoms as building particles was considered. Nowadays this lecture is referred as the origin of the nanotechnological paradigm. Well, when was the first impression in the scientific world? The word nanotechnology was introduced for the first time into a scientific world by Norio Taniguchi at the International Conference on Industrial Production in Tokyo in 1974 in order to describe the super thin processing of materials with nanometer accuracy and the creation of nanosized mechanisms. Carbon nanomaterials until recently, only two types of all-carbon crystalline structures were known, namely the naturally occurring allotropes, diamonds, and graphite. The breakthrough discovery of carbon nanotubes and fluorines have revolutionized carbon science from experiments on clusters formed by laser vaporizations of graphite. The discovery of fluorines and nanotubes has generated considerable research into their properties and potential applications. So. Many more carbon nanostructures have also been discovered. For example, the nano peapod, which is a carbon nanotube with many fluorines encapsulated within its interior, is one such novel nanostructure. Other carbon nanostructures which have received attention are nanotory, nano orions, and nano bundles, as we see in the picture D, E, and F. In that case, our focus is the use of geometry and mechanics for modeling, in contrast to quantum mechanical, electrical, or optical applications. As a consequence of their unique mechanical and electronic properties, carbon nanostructures are being investigated for their use in numerous applications such as nano composites, 
nano capsules, shock absorbers, nanoscale instruments, nanostraws, computer memories, and superconductors. Carbon carbon bonding. Carbon is the sixth element in the periodic table, and the free carbon atom has six electrons which occupy 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2 atomic orbitals. The 2s and 2p orbitals have similar energy levels. In practice, it's not possible to know exactly where the electrons are since they appear smeared into orbitals. Despite this, the orbital notation is commonly used. When bonding with other atoms, the electronic structure of a single carbon atom may be hybridized to adapt to various structural arrangements. The energy difference between the upper 2p orbitals and the lower 2s orbital is small as compared to the binding of chemical bonds. Therefore, these electrons can readily mix with each other to enhance the binding energy of the carbon atom with neighboring atoms and this process is called hybridization. Graphene The most commonly occurring form of carbon is graphite, which is formed from many layers of graphene sheets. Graphene is a planar sheet consisting of a tessellation of hexagonal rings of carbon atoms, or a honeycomb lattice. Graphene is the mother element of some carbon allotropes including graphite, carbon nanotubes, and fluorines. History of Graphene Graphene was theoretically established in 1940. Bohem and co-workers in 1962 separated tin carbon layers from graphite oxide. In 2010, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Andrew Game and Konstantin Novoselo for the successful preparation and isolation of graphene samples of highly oriented pyrolytic graphite. Graphene is an automatically thick 2D planar sheet of carbon atoms arranged in a CP2 hybridized configuration and densely packed in a honeycomb structure. Graphene is relatively near and thinnest known material. Due to its extraordinary properties, graphene gets an enormous amount of interest worldwide. These properties make them viable candidates for a wide variety of potential applications. Then, let's look at some applications of graphene. Graphene polymer matrix components. Graphene plays an important role in the development of nanocomposites due to its high specific surface area, unique graphitized plane structure, and excellent mechanical, electrical, magnetic, and thermal properties. Mechanical applications. The main objective of a high performance polymer composite for mechanic application is the balance between strength and toughness. And graphene improves these two mechanical properties when it is added into a polymer. These properties together with large specific surface area make graphene excellent reinforcing nanofilters. For example, touch screens that use graphene as their conductor could be slapped onto plastic rather than glass. That would mean super thin, unbreakable touch screens and never worrying about shattering your phone ever again. Electrical applications. Some studies on graphene are related to mechanical reinforcement. However, the great majority of graphene composite applications are in the field of nanoelectronics. For example, high power graphene supercapacitors would make batteries obsolete. Also, possible applications of graphene, such as superchargers, you can plug your phone in for 5 seconds and it will be all charged up. The downside here is that you won't be able to use that phone as an excuse anymore. Biological applications. In addition to the electrical and mechanical applications, graphene can also be used to reduce the needs. For example, graphene could pave the way for bionic devices in living tissue that could be connected directly to your nerves. So, people with spinal injuries 
could relearn how to use their limbs. Carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes, according to the concept, are graphene sheets wrapped around itself to form cylindrical tubes. These tubes consist of layers of sp2 bonded carbon atoms where each carbon atom is connected to three other on the xy plane. There are three basic types of carbon nanotubes, which are normally categorized as single volt, double volt, and multi volt carbon nanotubes, which has several concentric tubes. History of carbon nanotubes The discovery by Ijima that carbon nanotubes could be grown without a catalyst has generated considerable research into numerous potential applications ranging from prospective devices in biology to electronics. His paper outlined the experimental identification of multivolt carbon nanotubes and had a significant impact on subsequent scientific research. This is often considered to be the first occurrence of carbon nanotubes, but in fact they were observed much earlier. First evidence using transmission electron microscopy of the tubular nature of some nanosized carbon filaments appeared in 1952 by Rodoshkevich and Lukyanovich in Russian Journal of Physics Chemistry. Figures from this paper clearly show carbon filaments with a continuous inner cavity and tubes that formed as a result. The nanotubes are now thought to be multivolt carbon nanotubes with 15 to 20 layers. However, this paper received very little attention from the world scientific community, perhaps because of the Cold War and the general difficulties of obtaining Russian scientific documents. But carbon nanotubes have received much attention and are a worldwide research subject since their discovery in 1991. Laboratory methods to synthesize single volt carbon nanotubes are discovered in 1993 by Beton and colleagues at the IBM Almaden Research Center in San Jose, California, and also independently by Sumio Ijima at the NEC Laboratories in Japan. Here are some properties of carbon nanotubes. And let's get into the applications of carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotube polymer matrix composites. Polymers have a wide range of applications, which include advanced engineering, such as car and airplane parts, optical components, electronic packaging, insulating, semiconducting materials, tubing, and liquid crystal display, among others. Despite its favorable characteristics, polymers have some limitations such as low melting temperature, low strength, and time-dependent liquid-like flow. The first work to study the addition of carbon nanotubes as reinforcement in the polymer matrix was performed by Schaeffer and Windel in 1999. They studied the thermomechanical and electrical properties of nanocomposites with polyvinyl alcohol and carbon nanotubes. They observed that the stiffness of the nanocomposites at room temperatures was relatively low, but was considerably high at the elevated temperatures. In addition, these nanocomposites showed the same percolation behavior observed in the other fiber fluid systems. They concluded that nanotubes could be used as a polymer modifier particularly to be used at high temperatures. Mechanical Applications One tablet is made out of carbon nanotubes and is one of the darkest substances known absorbing up to 99.9% .9 of visible light. In the field of mechanics, it is known that carbon nanotubes exhibit excellent mechanical properties, with Young's modulus as high as 1.2 terapascals and tensile strength of 50 to 200 gigapascals. These exceptional characteristics combined with low density and high surface area and high aspect ratio make carbon nanotubes strong candidates as nanocomposite reinforcing materials. Electrical applications 
Carbon nanotubes have some advantages over regular materials such as high aspect ratio and excellent electrical conductivity. These properties facilitate the formation of conducting networks transforming insulating polymers into conducting polymers. Therefore, carbon nanotubes and polymer-based nanocomposites are currently attracting much attention due to their use in flexible electronics, antistatics and electromagnetic interference shielding and sensor applications. Application of carbon nanotubes for lithium-ion battery anode material Carbon nanotubes have demonstrated to be very effective buffering components and can serve as the backbone in nanostructured anode materials since they can alleviate the degradation of the structural integrity that often results from the significant volume change associated with the charging and discharging process. Carbon nanotube ceramic optics components Although most research in the development of nanocomposites is focused on nanotube-based polymer nanocomposites, great attention has been given to the development of metal and ceramic matrix nanocomposites with nanotubes as reinforcement. Ceramics are known to have high stiffness and excellent thermal stability. However, their brittleness is a barrier for expanding its use as structural materials. Due to resilience and flexibility of carbon nanotubes, their addition to ceramics can be particularly advantageous in terms of mechanical properties. This combination can produce nanocomposites with excellent toughness and creep resistance combined with high temperature stability. Biomedical applications Recently, there has been great interest in using carbon nanotubes in biomedicine, which is a field that covers concept of nanotechnology, biology and medicine. Functionalized carbon nanotubes are capable of increasing the electrochemical reactivity of important biomolecules, promoting direct electron transfer reaction of proteins. Therefore, functionalized carbon nanotubes are the focus point for a wide range of electrochemical biosensors. Biosensors are extremely important for the detection of biological phenomena in medicine. Carbon nanotubes are most common nanomaterials that are used in the drug delivery because of their unique spectroscopic properties and because they can be easily functionalized either covalently or non-covalently and decorated with bioactive peptides, small molecule drugs, proteins and nucleic acids for gene delivery. Fullerenes The first fullerene to be observed was the C60 fullerene or buckyball, named after the designer and architect Richard Buckminster Fuller, who first proposed geodesic dome structures. A geodesic dome is an almost spherical structure formed from a network of great circles lying on approximately the surface of a sphere. This fullerene was so named due to the direct association with geodesic dome. Since then, many more different fullerenes have been observed, such as the C70 fullerene, which is not spherical. Fullerenes can be thought of as hollow, closed cage of carbon atoms, where the carbon atoms are approximately located on either the surface of a sphere, such as the C60 fullerene, or on the surface of a spheroid, such as the C70 fullerene. The term spheroid refers to an ellipsoid which has two of the axes equal. In some cases, the fullerenes can be shaped like capsules resembling short cylinders with two hemispherical caps such as the C80 fullerene. History of fullerene Fullerenes were discovered in 1985 by a research group at Rice University led by Robert Kerr, Sir Harold Croto and Richard Smalley. For their discovery, all three received the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1996. Their discovery, which subsequently has generated considerable research and development, was in fact purely accidental. These researchers were conducting experiments on clusters formed by laser vaporization of graphite, for various interesting and quite unrelated reasons. Koto believed that studying these clusters 
might provide some insight into the process occurring on the surface of stars. And Simoli's main interest was for application to semiconductors. In the suit resulting from their experiments, they discovered a closed carbon cluster consisting of precisely 60 carbon atoms with unique stable and symmetrical characteristics. These structures had been proposed in earlier work. However, their discovery, for which they won the Nobel Prize, was for the realization that carbon itself could form truncated icosahedral molecules and larger geodesic structures. Let's check the properties of fluorine. Now let's look at some applications of fluorine. For example, pharmaceutical delivery, some examples of the biomedical applications of fluorines. Here is another application of fluorine is lubricants. They can be used to reduce friction between surfaces in mutual contact. At last but not least, the another application of fluorine is catalysts. Fluorine hybrids have successfully been used as catalysts in hydrogen transfer reactions, namely ketone reduction and an alkylation with alcohol. Due to their pure solubility in polar solvents, these hybrids behave as homogeneous, heterogeneous catalysts that can be mechanically separated and reused several times while the final products don't need chromatographic separation. Carbon nanocons CNCs. Very little of the existing literature deals with carbon nanocons. Carbon nanocons have received less attention primarily because only a small amount tend to occur the production process and most research on nanocons deal with their electronic structure. There are five possible ways to construct carbon nanocons depending on the number of pentagons which are needed to close the vertex. It is believed that the different number of pentagons in carbon nanocons is the key to the puzzle of nucleation in atomic construction. The catalytic chemical vapor deposition method can be used to synthesize carbon nanocons inside carbon nanotubes and the resulting structures have different physical and electronic properties from that of the original carbon structure. Carbon nanocons are ideal candidates for nanoprobes in scanning tannin microscopy and their electronic structure is dependent on the position of the pentagons. Carbon nanocons also have a nonlinear mechanical behavior for both the original shape and the inverse carbon nanocon, which is obtained from the original cone by inversion. History of carbon nanocons Carbon nanocons were originally discovered by Gay and Settler and subsequently synthesized by Krishna. Typically, carbon nanocons are observed together with carbon nanotubes and nanotube bundles during the synthesized process and carbon nanocons tend to be found at the cup of carbon nanotubes. There are five possible structures for nanocons. By transmission electron microscope images, since the cone angle depends on the number of the pentagons needed to close the structure. Cones are formed from hexagons on a honeycomb lattice by adding fewer pentagons than the six which are needed by Euler's theorem to form the closed structure of a semifluid. A closed cage fullerene may be generated from a hexagon lattice, provided that there are precisely 12 pentagons. The carbon nanotube cap, which is half a fullerene or semifullerene, contains 6 pentagons, and therefore carbon nanocons must have a number of pentagons which is less than 6. So, let's look at properties of carbon nanocons. The force deformation responses of carbon nanocons are obtained and compared with those of carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanocons with a larger apex angle present a larger failure strength, but a smaller maximum strain under tension. When we come to the possible applications of carbon nanocons, as we mentioned in the introduction, it can be used as nanoprobe in the scanning thermal microscope. As I finish my presentation, here is references that help me through the preparation process. Thank you for listening to me and have a great day.